today we're going to learn how to use an opto coupler or a solid state relay to switch on and off an inverter with a cheap BMS. This will enable people to get over some of the limitations of a BMS that uses FETs for switching the loads on and off. Typically these are limited by current and if you want to buy a high current capacity BMS they're very expensive. And also the FETs can burn out over time or become leaky and there's all sorts of other problems with that, especially with a capacitative load such as an inverter. And so what we're going to do instead is use the BMS to control a solid state relay that will control the inverter at the on and off switch. So we're going to make some slight modifications to this inverter, but we will be able to make an incredibly powerful and long lasting system with very cheap components. You can use any BMS on the market to trigger one of these opto couplers and you can modify most inverters to work with this opto coupler. What's nice is that this BMS could be a one or a 100 amp BMS and it does not matter. It's only there to monitor and manage the cells. So you still have cell balancing and it's monitoring the cells for high and low voltage circumstances, but you can use any size BMS to trigger this optocoupler. And to be clear, the P negative of the BMS or the BMS output is what controls the solid state relay. And when this has power, because the BMS says that all the cells are happy, it will close the contacts or cause a closed circuit between these two terminals that will turn on the inverter. Now let's talk about the inverter. Not all inverters will work with an opto coupler. You need an actual on and off switch. Some of them you have to hold the button down and they have a time dependent variable. So those ones will not work. If you have a traditional switch, just like this, then it should work. And that's a single pole, single throw, I believe. It's just a basic switch with two leads. So that's enough talking, let's test it out. So the BMS balance cable is disconnected. That means P negative is not supplying a voltage to the SSR. So let's plug it in. And because this is a DALI BMS, you typically have to short out the B negative and the P negative to turn on the BMS. So let's do that. Now the inverter is on. So the moment this has power, the inverter will turn on. Now the inverter output is live, but let's say that you use this battery down to too low of a voltage and one of the cells hits a low voltage disconnect situation. This BMS will disconnect power and listen to this. It will turn off the inverter. That small clicking was the inverter turning off, but the cooling fans like to stay on for a while. But that means that this small BMS is controlling this large inverter. And this is only a 60 amp BMS. And this inverter can push way more than that. It's like double that. So that's how you use a small BMS to control an inverter. And the hardest part of this system is opening up in your inverter and wiring these two wires in series with the on and off switch. So let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside. And this is the inside of an LV2424. If you buy a Victron or another high quality inverter with a relay input control, you do not need to do this. But if you are on a budget, you can buy these and see the on and off switch. All I did is wire those two cables to the switch in series so that I can still use this switch, but I can control it with the SSR. So very simple, just solder on a couple wires and you are done. Something to note about these solid state relays is some of them are directional. So make sure that you have a DC input and DC output. And if it doesn't work at the DC output side, but you see voltage right here, that means that you have to reverse the two wires because current actually does flow a small amount of current, but it does flow one way and not the other. And I actually had that problem with this one. So I had to reverse the wires and then everything worked perfectly. Another thing is you need to buy the made in USA UL listed code compliant SSRs. If you buy the cheap Chinese ones, look up the reviews. These like to fail a lot. And look at how cheaply made this is. Like compared to this, you're only saving like three or four dollars when you buy the cheap ones. So buy the nice ones. And I bought this off of Amazon, it's 22 bucks. One downside of this system that you see in front of you is there is no high voltage disconnect. So if one of these cells rises too high in voltage, the BMS will shut down power, but guess what? This only controls the output of the inverter. It does not control the MPPT or the AC charger. So it will continue to charge even if the BMS says to disconnect everything. 
So, you have to set your absorption manually, but that's not a big deal. I personally only care about low voltage di disconnect with large loads, because that is what will kill these batteries instantly. These can handle some degree of overcharging, but you don't want to do it all the time. But if you have a MPPT or an AC charger and you can manually set the absorption, this is not an issue at all. But you should cycle it a few times, make sure that your pack is balanced, and then manually set the absorption so it's very accurate when it's top balanced. Anyways, I have other videos on that, please watch those instead. And some people might be wondering, Will, we were just using electromechanical relays recently. We had a 500 amp continuous duty relay, we used it on one of the inverter leads, and we could switch it on or off. And that actually has a high voltage disconnect too, because it completely isolates the inverter from the battery if there is a low voltage or a high voltage disconnect situation, or a low temperature charging issue. You can instantly switch it off with a large relay. The problem with the relay, as you guys know and I mentioned in the previous video, is that there's an idle consumption. If you have a large solar power system, this is not a big deal at all but the chance of failure over time is higher than having a completely solid state system. And also controlling that many amps is somewhat illogical, especially a 500 amp relay, that is a lot of current. I also realize that with overall system design, if you are limited by current with a BMS, you probably should be increasing your voltage. You can still use FET based BMSs if you actually derate them properly. So let's say you have a 100 amp BMS and you wanna power a 50 amp load all day long. That will work perfectly. But if you're powering a 90 to 95 amp load with a 100 amp BMS, and you're exposing those FETs to a capacitive and or inductive load, especially with large inverters with induction loads like motors, then this thing is going to fail pretty quickly. But if it's derated properly, even the surge will be handled by your BMS. So let's say a 100 amp BMS on a 12 volt battery, you can only power a 1200 watt inverter. Let's step it up to 48 volts. Now we can run a 4800 watt inverter with a 100 amp BMS. And they have 300 amp 48 volt inverters, so that's like something like 15,000 watts of power. And all we did was increase the voltage. So it's not really the components that are a problem, it's our design methods. So you can still use the FET based ones, but you need to design it properly for your specified application and derate it properly. With FET based, I like to do 50% for continuous. Um, some people like 60, 66%, it really depends. I want these things to last a really long time, so 50% is a really good number for most systems. The next problem with traditional relays is there's idle consumption. And this is not a big deal if you have a large system. Even a 500 amp continuous duty relay, when spec'd appropriately for your application, for surge and everything else included into your calculations, will work perfectly fine. And the watt hour consumption over 24 hours of having that relay on all the time is not that bad. And they're very reliable. But having a small SSR controlling just the inverter switch is more logical. And this leads me to the next benefit. With this system, the inverter is directly connected to the battery. The only thing between this battery and the inverter is OCPD, or the fuse or circuit breaker or whatever you choose to use. And the less circuits that you have between the battery and the inverter, the better, especially for surge loads. If you have any FETs or relays between a large load for even instantaneous, and it's like three or four times the current for a millisecond, that will burn out FETs. What's also nice is these can switch on and off very quickly. You can do it like thousands of times per second. And the isolation between these two circuits, it's like 4,000 volts. So it's really good. Like you don't have to worry about anything over here. And the area between the photodiode and the LED is very small. It's really cool how they construct these things. But yeah, this will last a lifetime. This system right here 
should last a crazy long amount of time. Even this BMS that's super cheap because we are not putting any stress or strain on it. And these do work well. There's conformal coating even if there's moisture around. Like these will work just fine long term. And if you think about this system in front of you, the first thing that would fail is this inverter. We have capacitors and FETs and these will burn out eventually. But all of this stuff over here is solid state and will last a very long time. You want to buy high quality inverters and I've opened up almost every MPP inverter and they are high quality but they are not UL listed. If you can afford to buy like a Victron inverter it will cost two to three times as much but they're very nice and you won't have to modify anything over here. It already has the relay input control. So you could wire up this whole system with the BMS in minutes with a Victron inverter. But I understand that a lot of my viewers cannot afford those, but if you can, they are really nice. They will last a very long time. And I've had cheap inverters fail on me before. I find that a lot of the new inverters that are reviewed a lot that are cheap are actually really good. Um, I think they're just derating them properly, but the MPP inverters are great. There's conformal coating over the whole board, and if one of the boards fails, you can swap it out with another one. A lot of people think that the all-in-one units, you can't work on them. Everything in this thing you can swap out. So if the inverter circuit burns out, but the MPPT doesn't, you can buy that part. So I personally like these, they're dead cheap and crazy powerful, but I don't recommend them for everyone. And if you're a beginner and you have a lot of money, just do this with the Victron and you will be set. It would take minutes. $20 BMS, $20 SSR, any inverter that you want, and it's cheap. Like you can buy raw cells, control a huge inverter and push the thermal limits of your cells. You can do whatever you want now. So this is really nice, you guys. This is like an awesome setup. You have like the reliability of an SBMS from Electrodocus, but you have cheap components that you can buy anywhere in the world. So I dig it, but yes, manually set the absorption for charging and watch the cell voltages, especially with the MPP. That's the only thing. If you have a separate charger, then you can do that on your own, or you could control that charger with a relay type system too. But yeah, I wouldn't do that. I would just set the absorption and be done with it. It would take like three minutes and my system would be set for years. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Please let me know what you think. If you want to know more about this, let me know in the comment section below. I like talking to you guys and figuring out what you missed in the video. And then we can pin a comment if I missed something substantial or if there's a correction. So please check below. Also, the forum has gotten really big. So please check it out. DIYSolarForum.com. It's ranking number one for most solar keywords such as like solar forum, DIY solar. I use the incognito tab on Chrome and it's it's doing really well. This morning there was over 600 people on there in one instance. So that was crazy. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, bye.